So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys five portrait lighting setups using this one, a Sony F28RM, and as our main modifier, a Photix 120 Premium Reflective Umbrella with a diffuser in front. Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in case you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so so that you get a chance to win our giveaway, which is a MagMod starter kit. We will be announcing the winner on Feb 15, 2021 and I will put the details on how to enter in the description below. So as I said in my intro, we will be shooting with just this one. This is a new flash from Sony, the F28RM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it here on the MagMod MagShoe, which will serve as our umbrella holder. And this, as I said, our main modifier, the Photix Premio 120. Now, I will be sharing with you guys five different lighting setups for different types of portraits. And as usual, my, my model will be my wife, Coco. Babe, can you come in? So the first portrait lighting setup that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is one of my favorites. It's basically creating a clean and classic portrait. So before that, of course, what camera am I using? I'm using my Sony a7R Mark IV. The lens that I'm using is a 24 to 72.8 GM. And the flash trigger that's controlling the F28RM is the WRC1M from Sony. This allows me to remotely control this flash unit. And as usual, I am showing you guys a live view of everything that I am shooting through the help of my Holyland Mars 400S Pro transmitter. Okay, so let's start off with this one. Let's check my camera settings. What are my camera settings as of now? It is 1 over 250 f4 ISO 100. Maybe I will make it at f2.8 because I want to balk in the background a little bit. Now, I will show you my actual exposure. When I turn off my flash, this is my actual exposure. So as you can see, you're hardly getting any of the existing ambient light. So all the light that you're getting now is coming from my flash. So let's turn on my trigger again. There we go. Very nice. Though we are a bit underexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the power of my flash, which is set now at 132 power. I'm going to make it about 1 8th power. Very nice. I think I can adjust the position of the light a little bit and get more light on the background. There we go. Very nice. Very nice image, very classic. But I could actually open up the shadows a little bit, but just by adding a reflector here. This is just an ordinary foam board. And I position my light solely to to throw a lot of light away from the subject so that it would when it hits this foam board it will actually open up the shadows on the left side of her face okay very nice beautiful okay so that's portrait lighting setup number one so basically i had my light feathered away from coco so that most of the spill light will be going towards this general direction, after which I just put a foam board here to open up the shadows behind her. Okay, so that's a very simple classic portrait. The next one, we will just transfer this light here in my back. Now this light will give the effect of a, of a ring light, but the one thing that I don't like about ring lights, it's got, it, ring lights actually give a beautiful light to, to a person's face. But one thing that I actually don't like about ring lights is the fact that it gives this um, catch light in the eye that for me is unpleasing. So with this particular lighting setup, you can actually get the effect of the ring light without having those weird catch eyes in the eye. Some people may love it, but I personally don't like it. Okay. So let's just bring it up a bit. Babe, do you mind taking out the apple box and going near, near the background? All right, perfect. With this one, I'm already assuming I'll keep my settings to be the same, one over 250 F2.8 ISO 100. I probably won't touch the settings anymore. 
The only thing I'm going to change is the light position and the light power. So I will make my flash stronger for sure. I think I need this at 100% or full power. Okay. All right, babe. On the count. One, two, three. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful light. Right out of the bat, it just gives you fantastic light. It's just flooding the light, uh, flooding the background, making her glow inherently already. So let's just take a few more shots of this one. Okay. On the count. One, two. Okay, that's portrait lighting setup number two. So basically what I had as I just had my reflective umbrella here behind me, flooding light towards Coco. The key with this one is that you have to have her near the background in order for you get to get that really nice glow and this nice haloing around her. Okay, so let's move on to the third one. The third one, I could bring the light over here. And can you bring back your Apple box, please? What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the MagMod Mag Grip now so that I can tilt it so that it's almost horizontal to the floor. And I will bring this one up and do overhead lighting. Now the key with overhead lighting is you have to understand where your light is. So your model or your subject, you should direct them and tell them, hey, your light is up coming from above. You should be facing towards the light because if they do that or if they don't, you're gonna get really unpleasing shadows underneath the eyes and underneath her chin, such as this case. Notice all the shadows underneath her face, and I think we're slightly underexposed, so I'll probably bring up the power to one fourth power now. So this time, can you look up, babe? There. So if she looks up, you could already see she's getting a lot of light in her face, and we're removing all those unpleasing shadows around her eyes. So this time, I think we could pose it. You could put your hand somewhere here, there, and hold on to it. Then look up, tilt your head towards the left, there, chin up some more. There, there, that's perfect. How about with this one, instead of doing that, hold on to your heart, there. But looking up also. Face, chin towards me a bit more, there. Tilt your head away, too much, bring it back. Chin towards there, there, perfect, chin up, there. Cool, perfect. Oh, I love that. Love that, perfect. One more. Tilt your head away. Close your eyes, that's it, close your eyes. With a hint of a smile. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's portrait lighting setup number three. A really nice overhead dramatic light, but one thing that you guys have to remember is to always make her face towards the light in order for you not to get those really ugly shadows underneath her eyes and her chin. Okay, so now let's go to portrait lighting setup number four. Okay, do you mind standing up babe? So this time, we won't be using this backdrop. Actually, if you guys are wondering what this backdrop is, this is a hand-painted backdrop from Kate Backdrop. Fantastic, fantastic backdrop. It's five feet by seven feet. And well, I'll put a link in the description below if you guys are interested in this backdrop. So I will have this one as our backdrop and create a really nice high-key portrait. Okay, can, we come, can you come here, babe? There. So what Coco is going to be doing, she will be right in front of the flash so that I don't see it in my camera. Then again, I will bring out my foam board and use it as reflectors. So basically what's happening now is that all the light that is spilling away from Coco towards the lens, I am going to be capturing with these reflectors and it's going to bounce back towards Coco's face, creating a nice, simple, high-key portrait. Very nice, very nice, beautiful, 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 very simple high key portrait. So that's how simple it was. All I had was the flash in the back, illuminating, creating that nice white background. All the light that was spilling on this foam board just bounced back and that's where I based my exposure from. Okay, so now let's go to the final lighting setup, which will be the total opposite of what I just did. So that was portrait lighting number four. So now for the fifth one, excuse me, babe, I'm gonna be using this foam board and I'm gonna be putting it over this one, over the umbrella. 
and basically blocking out the light. So instead of creating a high key photograph, we're gonna create a low key photograph, do you mind? The key here is having the light or the foam board just slightly above her head so that all this light in the side will create a nice rim. All right, can you profile? I love that. Can you move towards the background a bit more? Very nice. I think we're just slightly overexposed. So I'm gonna bring it back to one fourth power. Very nice, beautiful. Take one tiny step forward, please. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful light. Don't move your head, just your shoulder to the right a bit. Sorry, the other way. Some more, there, that's it. Lovely. Then your chin towards your left a bit. I love that. Very nice. And the final tweaking to this one is we could even add another foam board here just to light up a bit more of her face. And we'll take the same shot. Very nice. So that was five portrait lighting setups using just my Sony F28RM and a 120CM premium umbrella from Photix. Now you guys might be saying, okay, so that was really fast. It was interesting, but really fast. Here's the secret. I actually made this five videos already explaining every single light setup that I just showed you, and I will be putting the links in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so so that you can have a chance to win that MagMod Starter Kit giveaway. And in case you want to see more of my images, you can always follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.